Hello and welcome to Scrapping on the Fly. My name is Kristen and I'm here with Mix It Up Monday, a hop started by Anna with Peacecraft Love and Kimberly with I'd Rather Be Scrapbooking. And we take a sketch and we mix it up a little bit, add some mixed media and do our thing. So this sketch is by Inspired Blueprints. And I am going to be documenting these two pictures that my son took of my dog. And I'm going to use the Bark Collection by Echo Park. This is a 2015 paper collection. And these are the embellishments that came with it. I believe that I got all or most... No, I think I got all of this from um, Echo Park's warehouse sale. And then I am going to use this Bow Bunny Distress and this Tim Holtz... I can try to show you these little circles because I kind of felt like they would be um, a really good option for the inking or distress part. And I have my tea dye and I have walnut stain and um, uh, espresso. Why can't I think of the name of it? Ground espresso. How else would you want it? And then, of course, I have a sticker sheet. And I've not used this collection, but maybe once. So there's a couple stickers um, and uh, some paper scraps that are in here. And then I brought in these two um, paw prints because I wasn't sure what I might want to use. Except other than the ephemera and the sticker sheet. So I have my papers, my embellishments, my pictures, and the sketch. So let's see how this goes. So first things first, I go through the collection. And... I would love to use those doggy papers, but they were the wrong direction unless I had turned my paper sideways or the sketch sideways. But I do want to go ahead and use the puppy paws because they're kind of going all over the place. So there's not an up or down with those. And so then I go through my papers to see if I can use one of them for the base page. If there's one that's light enough, that's not too busy. And I end up with this blue paper. And I was trying right there to determine it's got like a zigzag pattern in the background. And I wondered if I wanted it to go up and down or left to right. And since I'm going to have a horizontal and a vertical element, it would have been okay either way. But um, doing it horizontally seemed more fitting. Now here's where I make my first mistake. <laughs> my plan was to use the lighter color on the bottom with this um, distressed kind of um, mucky um, stamp. And then after I do that, I was going to put the dark colors on the top with the stencil. However, right here I realize I screwed up. <laughs> That's not how what I did. So instead of having one line of uh, inking and embell and um, uh, mixed media. I'm going to have this dark line right here. And of course that center part, this is probably where I'm like, well, shoot. Um, that center part where it's going to be covered. You're not going to see that once you put this, the vertical um, papers and stuff on there. So then I take the tea dye and add a little tea dye into this part at the top. And then I'm also going to extend the mixed media area down. So I'm going to put this tea dye kind of um, random and not necessarily neat, which it doesn't matter with this, all the way across for the most part. And <clears throat> so that I have that lighter color of mixed media. I'm going to turn that around. There we go. And so now I have a lighter space underneath where I am then going to take my stencil and I've taped some paper on there so that the um, part of the stencil above that, I think it's some numbers, don't um, I don't accidentally um, push this walnut stain through it. So I just push this down and I've got another piece of paper down at the bottom so I don't go off onto the page. So I'm just going to push through a little bit of that here and there you can see how... Um, that walnut stain is so much darker and it worked really well on that tea dye but had I continued and just used the grand espresso it would have been too dark and you wouldn't have seen it which was the whole point <laughs> of what I was doing so I just do the same thing over here on the other side and push that walnut stain through the stencil 
and then I am going to move that aside and I looked at it for a little while I I like it um while I would love to have just had the circles and not those little areas in between like the little triangles between it's fine and I like it but I decide to kick it up a notch and get out my spray bottle and spray some water on here and of course this is not um you know the kind of paper that holds water very well so I've got to be really careful because it gets a little um thin and I don't leave it to dry for very long I mean the ink is dry but you can see where there's some water in the middle that's not even where the ink was so I decided I'm going to start building my layout off of the background paper so I'm just <clears throat> excuse me um getting this stuff together here and um, I put it together over there on the side trimmed a little bit off both of the papers and in the sketch there's like some washi tape or something um down the middle as an element instead of doing that I just cut when I cut the border um from that border strip paper I cut the dog bone one as well and I'm going to have that be that middle element that kind of ties the two pictures and the two strips together but I don't take it off of that plaid paper because it just kind of seemed um you know like a, there was no point to do that so I'm just writing the date right here on one of these little strips so that I can remember and I will go in and write that later after the camera stops rolling um, and then I don't know if I'll journal because it's just some pictures that my son took of our dog um, when he was laying in here talking to me one day. Not the dog. The dog wasn't talking to me. My son was. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's talking to me and I just don't understand him. Um, but my son was talking to me and the dog laid down and was um, on his blanket. And um, so this is the original way I was going to set this up. And because it's kind of what it looks like on the sketch, but I'm going to make a couple changes. So I go ahead and bring this background paper in and um, I've inked up around both the papers. The plaid paper I inked up with the uh, walnut stain. And normally I would do that with a blending brush, not like the big blending brush that I used, but like a little foam. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling kind of lazy. It's late and I'm tired. <laughs> and so I decided that I would just do what I had, use what I had. But then I did use the tea dye on a foam dauber and ink up the puppy paw one just so it would give it a little bit. Um, not that it's going to disappear into that blue paper, but I just thought I would go ahead and ink around that as well. And so that's been inked on. And then I inked around that plaid paper with the walnut stain. And I choose to put this picture of my dog. He almost looks like he's praying. His little paws are in front of him and his eyes are closed and he's kind of looking down. Um, so I put that to up here at the top because this other picture, which may be one of my favorite pictures of him, he's just laying there. My son laid on the floor and put the picture or the camera like on the carpet and took the picture to where it was flush with the floor. And it's just such a pretty um, paper or a pretty picture and such a sweet face. It's my sweet doggy. Um, although he's in trouble with me right now, he just got into the trash bag. And so I came in here, I'd already picked this layout to create and I came in here and sat down and I went, of all the layouts that I'm about to do, it's you and I'm mad at you right now, <laughs> but it's fine. I love him, but just like all my children, you know, the other two, um, even when they make me mad, I still love them. Uh, anywho. So I decided I would use this piece from the ephemera box that says home is where the dog is. And I agree with that. I'm going to ink that up like I said, like I did with the puppy paw paper with the tea dye. And now I'm looking for a title to put on here. And it could be home is where the dog is. And it may be that my title is that. But I'm looking for something like a word phrase or something to put at the bottom of this layout. I don't know if you can tell, but my son's arm is kind of in the picture and I don't want to cut it any more than I already did because it would have made it too short and I really wanted to keep the length. So I like this puppy love, but I didn't really want to bring the blue in. 
And um, so I'm going to stick with this red one that says I, I spoil my dog, which is totally true. I mean, totally. He is a very spoiled dog. Lots of attention, lots of love. His brother is all the time oohing and on and petting him and loving on him. Obviously, based on these pictures, they're very good buddies. So I have a scrap paper that I use to cover the stencil when I was inking. So it has that walnut stain on it. And I just, it's the back of like a piece of paper from a baby book or something. But it's just been sitting next to me and it's white on the back. So I thought the top part's white. The bottom part is that wood stain, walnut stain, and it would fit perfectly. So where there are but, uh, some flowers on the sketch, I'm going to use puppy paws and dog bones. So I put a puppy paw up here where the little um, tag or that home is where the dog is. And then I'm going to put a couple more. Um, and I use the brown ones because I've pretty much stuck with a brown theme. There's really not any black on here. So there's black and brown puppy paws on this Stickabilities um, sticker sheet. And I do have Recollections ones, but they're all black. And I just thought, since I was really sticking with the brown theme, since that's the color of my dog, um, I would just go ahead and do that. So I just use some of the puppy paws, and then I start pulling the dog bones off of the sticker sheet. And then I also pull this little banner that says Cold Nose Warm Heart, because I thought that was the perfect picture to put that right on, since his nose is right there. Um, I fussy cut around this dog bone and um, just because I don't want it um, evened out like that, I thought it would look better if it was kind of like where the floral is, where the two pictures meet. And then I'm just going to use these other, I think there's three other bones on here. And I just put those down and layer those up. I just kind of um, back and forth with them so that... Um, they're all on there. I don't want to put more puppy paws on there because, well, the whole paper right there is paws. So I decided to do the dog bones instead. And I considered putting them on paper and matting them. But I feel like that cluster of dog bones is just perfectly fine the way it is. I do bring in a little sticker to put down on there to help bring some attention to that space. But first I'm going to do three, two clusters of three little hearts here in the top right part um, of the layout. And then I'm going to put another three hearts down in the bottom left part. Um, right, yep, right there. And then after that, like I said, I pulled this little sticker in that says cute dog. And you'll see that in the close-ups. So I hope you all will go check out the links below for all the other creatives who are hopping along and creating for Mix It Up Monday. Um, I am really excited to go and watch and see what they do with this cool sketch. And I hope that you all will try it out. Get out your mixed media. It is scary and messy and fun. And you can't really make a mess up because I've messed up and I've made it work. So um, follow me for more ways to mess up your layout and try and fix them. So um, I hope that you all are creating and getting some inspiration from not just from me, which I would love, but from all the other creatives who are out there. I hope you all will come back and see me again really soon. I should be here every day this month doing Scrap Timber. And I hope to see you all again real soon. Have a great day and happy scrapping.